before the start of this video. All the praise, honor, and glory goes to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Ha'arakak, Wadash. Much honors and much respect, double honors, right, and double respect to the apostle elders of the great millstone. Rule well and teach well, and all this to you brothers who are bringing out this word in sincerity and in faith. All right, uh, sealing the hopeful elect of Israel. <clears throat> uh, it says, Iran says Israel killed militarily or military nuclear scientists remotely. So they're, they're saying that uh, he was killed by a drone. And as I was reading uh, down here, something just made me think of a, a certain scripture. I can't remember exactly where it was. Well, in any event, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom, right, which is the so-called white man. In the top house of Edom, Amalek, are you uh, so-called uh, Jews over there in Jerusalem? It says in his purposes that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Timon, Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Speaking about uh, the state of Israel. Surely he shall make their inhabitants desolate with uh, with them. So let's just read through this real quick. Uh, a top Iranian security official on Monday accused Israel of using electronic devices to remotely kill a scientist who founded the Islamic Republic's military nuclear program in the 2000s. The early 2000s. Ali Shamkani, the secretary of the country's Supreme National Security Council, made the comment at the funeral for Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, Fak where Iran's defense minister separately vowed to continue the man's work with more speed and more power. So yeah, the, hey man, Elam, Elam don't give a damn. They're about to turn up more. Okay, because they, they know what time it is, okay? Israel, long suspected of killing Iranian nuclear scientists over the last decade, has repeatedly declined to comment on the attack. Um, Fakhrizadeh headed Iran's so-called Ahmad program, which Israel and the West have alleged was a military operation looking at the feasibility of building a nuclear weapon, which that's, you know, they're being hypocrites because both of them... They say that Israel, the state of Israel, doesn't have uh, nuclear weapons, but we know that's true, right, through the Spirit. And, of course, the West <clears throat> has nuclear weapons. It says the International Atomic Energy Agency says the structured program ended, ended in 2003. U.S. intelligence agencies concurred with that assessment in a 2007 report. Israel insists Iran still maintains the ambition of developing nuclear weapons, pointing to Tehran's ballistic missile program and research into other technologies. Iran long has maintained that its nuclear program is for peaceful purposes. Which in their eyes, <laughs> it, in their eyes, it is for peaceful purposes. You know? <laughs> All right, it says read more. Uh, Iran newspapers strike Haifa. If Israel killed scientists, Iran's supreme leader vows revenge over slain scientists. Iran scientists linked to military nuclear program killed. All right, so just a little update. Shamkani's remarks drastically changed the story of Fakhrizadeh's killing, which took place Friday. Authorities initially said a truck exploded and then gunmen opened fire on the scientists, killing him and a bodyguard. State TV even in interviewed a man that the night of the attack who described seeing gunmen open fire. State TV's English language broadcaster Press TV reported earlier Monday that a weapon recovered from the scene of the attack bore the logo and specifications of the Israeli military industry. All right, it says, um, it claimed the weapons used were controlled by satellite. Damn, and es Esau's, Esau's blessing is a sword. So this is, this is not a ridiculous claim, okay? This is, this is a perfectly... 
feasible thing for them to do. All right. It says a claim also made Sunday by the semi official FARS news agency. None of the outlets immediately offered evidence supporting their claims, which also give authorities a way to explain why no one was reportedly arrested at the scene. Woo! Yeah, man. So, hey, it's getting a little, it's getting a little weird. Unfortunately, the operation was a very complicated operation. It was carried out by using electronic devices. Shemkani told State TV, no individual was present at the site. So, yeah, they probably used a drone, right? They used GPS. And uh, they took them out. Satellite control of weapons is nothing new. Armed long-range drones, for instance, rely on satellite connections to be controlled by their remote pilots. Remote-controlled gun turrets also exist, but typically see their operator connected by a hard line to cut down on the relay and commands being relayed. Israel uses such hardwired systems along the border with the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip. While technically feasible, it wasn't immediately clear if such a system had been used before, said Jeremy Benny, the Mideast editor of Jane's Defense Weekly. So this is not something that you commonly see, all right? Could you set up a weapon with a camera which then has a feed that uses an open satellite communications line back to the controller? Benny said, I can't see why that's not possible. It also raised the question whether the truck that exploded during the attack detonated afterward to try to destroy a satellite-controlled machine gun that was hidden inside the vehicle. Iranian officials did not immediately acknowledge that. It also would require someone on the ground to set up the weapon. Shamkani blamed the Iranian exile group Mujahideen El Kalf as well for having a role in this. <laughs> oh, man. Without elaborating, the Mech, as the exile group is known, has been suspected of assisting Israeli operations in Iran in the past, <clears throat> which really they're probably just some 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 agents or something like that. Shahin Gab Gabadi, and and Mech spokesman, dismissed Shemkani's remarks as rage, rancor, and lies, sparked by the group's earlier uh, exposes over Iran's nuclear program. Monday service for uh, Fakhrizadeh took place at an outdoor portion of Iran's defense ministry in Tehran, with officials including Revolutionary Guard Chief General uh, Hossein Salami, the Guard's Quds Force Leader, General uh, Eshmael Ghani, Civilian Nuclear Program Chief Ali Akbar Sahi, and Intelligence Minister Mahmoud Alavi. They set apart from each other and wore masks due to the coronavirus pandemic as as uh, reciters melodically read parts of the Quran and religious texts. So, you know, the, the, even though they know about this devil, man, they, they're still taking part uh, uh, in what the devil is saying. And that ultimately, the, through the spirit, they're tired. They're tired of doing that coronavirus. Uh, uh, they're tired of the coronavirus rhetoric. They're just tired of all of it. Defense Minister uh, General Amir Hatami gave a speech after kissing Fakhrizadeh's casket and putting his forehead against it, which, you know, that's how you know that the people over there, those aren't the, the, the people of the Lord, man. Because what did uh, Hamashat Yahawashai say? Let the dead bury the dead, man. No, don't worry about it. It's all good. You know, there's no reason to be going to no, um, to no uh, uh, funerals. Right, and that's something that's been told to us. Right, he said, uh, "Fakhrizadeh's killing would make Iranians more united, more determined. For the continuation of your path, we will continue with more speed and more power." Atami said in comments aired live by state television. Atami also criticized countries that hadn't condemned Fakhrizadeh's killing and warned, "This will catch up with you someday." Overnight, the United Arab Emirates which just reached a normalization deal with Israel, issued a statement condemning the heinous assassination. The UAE, home to Abu Dhabi and Dubai, warned the killing could further fuel conflict in the region. So just like the scriptures say, um, uh, though hand join in hand, the wicked uh, shall not go unpunished. And, and the state of Israel is a part of that, with most of them being uh, Amalek, you know, uh, Ishmael, I mean, yeah, there's different people in there. And amongst them, of course, are the actual children of Israel. 
It says, uh, last year the UAE found itself in the middle of an escalating series of incidents between Iran and the U.S. Though long suspicious of Iran's nuclear program, the Emirates has said it wants to de-escalate the crisis. The UAE just started passenger air service to Israel and Israelis are expected to vacation in the country over Hanukkah in the coming days. Bahrain and Island Kingdom all Saudi Arabia and the Persian Gulf that also recently normalized relations with Israel similarly condemn Fakhrizadeh's killing. In light of the current situation in the region, the Kingdom of Bahrain calls on all parties to exercise maximum restraint to avoid levels of instability, which the Lord ain't hearing that. The, the Lord wants to get it popping. All right? It says, Meanwhile, Israeli Foreign Min Ministry Director General Alan Ushpiz has sent a cable to all Israeli diplomatic delegations around the globe, urging diplomats to maintain the highest level of readiness and awareness of any irregular activity. So basically, they hey, they getting prepared. They're like, okay, something's going to happen. Okay, it says around missions in Jewish community centers. Hebrew language media, which that's not the real Hebrew, what they're speaking, all right? It's that, it's that Yiddish. It goes back to that, that Yiddish... Uh, Kind of, uh, uh, it's just a mix. It's kind of like a mix of, of German, Yiddish. It's just a mi uh, It's just a bunch of BS, right? It says uh, media in Israel reported that following Fakhrizadeh's killing, the foreign ministry ordered security increased at certain Israeli diplomatic missions overseas. The ministry declined to comment on diplomatic security matters. <clears throat> So let's just go ahead and see. Uh, let's go up a little bit. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, and verse 17. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at the plagues, at all the plagues thereof. So when it's speaking about Edom, Basically, it's speaking about America, because Esau Edom runs America. It says, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. So America is not going to be uh, inhabited by people. It's just going to be, you know, lizards, you know, owls, like it speaks about, you know, just desert creatures. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? And who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom and his purposes that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Timon. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he will make their habitations desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. So yeah, the whole world, right, is going to see what, what's about to take place, right? At the cry of the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Basra. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. Mm. Concerning Damascus, Hamath is confounded in our pod. For they have heard evil tidings. So yeah, so yeah they, they know what's going on. You know, the whole Middle East is getting ready for, for what's about to take place, right? They are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. So the sea goes into the people here upon the earth. <clears throat> so the, these, these prophecies are speaking. Verse 24, Damascus is wax feeble and turneth herself to flee. And fear hath seized on her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. How is the city of praise not left the city of my joy? Therefore her young men shall fall in her streets, and all the men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad. Verse 28, concerning Kedar and concerning the kingdoms of Hazor, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, shall smite. Thus saith the Lord, arise ye. 
go up to Kedar and spoil the men of the east. Mm. So it's going to be warfare, man. It's going to be warfare. Their tents and their flocks shall they take away. They shall take to themselves their curtains and all their vessels and their camels. And, their sh uh, and they shall cry unto them. Fear is on every side. Flee. Get you far off. Dwell deep, O ye inhabitants of Hazor, saith the Lord. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, hath taken counsel against you and hath conceived a purpose against you. Arise, get you up unto the wealthy nation that dwelleth without care, saith the Lord, which have neither gates nor bars, which dwell alone. And their camels shall be a booty, and a multitude of their cattle a spoil. And I, and I will scatter into all winds them that are in the... Uh, Salakia. I will scatter into all. I will scatter into all winds them that are in the utmost corners, and I will bring their calamity from all sides thereof, saith the Lord. And Hazor shall be a dwelling for dragons and a desolation forever. There shall no man abide there, nor any son of man dwell in it. So Hazor, once again, that's a representation of America, all right? The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah. All right, and Elam is Elam is the Persians. Elam is um, Pakistan, the East Indians also. <clears throat> in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah, saying. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their might. And upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and will scatter them toward all those winds. And there shall be no nation whither the outcasts of Elam shall not come. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies, and before them that seek their life, and I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger. So yeah, they're going to get some. Two, right? Saith the Lord, and I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them, and I will set my throne in Elam, and dis and will destroy from thence the king and the princes, saith the Lord. So does that mean he's gonna set up uh the kingdom in Elam? No, that mean that means that he's gonna use Elam uh to do his bidding. Right? He's gonna give Elam that that power with the nukes, he's gonna give Russia, China. India, Pakistan, so on and so forth, all right? <clears throat> that, that power, okay? It says, And will destroy from thence the king and the princes, saith the Lord. But it shall come to pass in the latter days, that I will bring again the captivity of Elam, saith the Lord. Yeah, so you, so you Elamites, you Ishmaelites, man, don't, don't get uh, uh, too comfortable. Cause y'all, you know, the, the wicked of you other nations, you going into captivity too. Cause everybody, see, everybody's fighting for that land. Ultimately, you got the Palestinians claiming that land. You got, um, yeah, really everybody around the world claims that to be their land when really it belongs to the 12 tribes of Israel. You Negroes, Latinos, uh, Native Americans, and you speckled, speckled birds who look like into the other nations. You know, so it, it don't belong to them. You know, and ultimately it belongs to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And he's going to give it to us, you know, being joint heirs with Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So it's not going to be ours until it's given to us by uh Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. And with him with him dwelling there, that's really what makes it powerful, right? Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is get is is giving the land to us through Yahweh Shai. Okay, by him speaking on it, by him uh, uh, giving his men the word of prophecy, us prophesying these things, all right, starting off with the Apostle Elders of the Great Millstone, all the way down to the least of men. Okay, and you, and you have men all over the world that are prophesying what's about to happen, right? This this war in the Middle East, right? Uh, Armageddon, right? Uh, um, uh, the, the war in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shapat, the Lord's judgment, 
and the, and the Middle East is going to be a hotbed. And this and this is built up for years and years and years. You had Operation Enduring Freedom, you know, Operation uh, Desert Shield, you know, all, all these different operations have led up to now, right? And in, in which now it's 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 all coming to a head. So all the praise, honor, and glory goes to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Ha'rakakwadash. Double honors to the Apostle Elders of the Great Millstone who rule well. And honors to you brothers who are bringing out this word in sincerity and in faith. And, you know, we're almost out of here, man. It's beautiful to understand that. You know, you hold on. Keep praying. Keep praying for your brothers, man. You know, pray for the elect. Don't pray for these, for these two-thirds, man. They can't, they can't see, you know, what the hopeful elect sees. We can see... That there's going to be warfare. We can see that there's going to be a, a war in heaven. Michael and his angels versus the dragon uh, and their angels. And just like in the scriptures, right, it speaks about uh, uh, Michael. Michael, Allah helped the most high. He's, he's through him, right, the angels, and ultimately through Yahalashai coming back. Okay, and him, and him putting that, um, uh, uh, those uh, th those perfect bodies on us to to uh, uh, to exact righteousness. All right, we're gonna put these damn devils into slavery. That's absolutely beautiful. These elite who are gonna get away. All right, just for a moment in time, just so they can go right back into slavery. And you got different uh, elite too. You have uh, elite Edomites, elite uh, Elamites, elite Ishmaelites. You know. <clears throat> You got all these different um, people who are going to escape judgment for but a moment. When the Lord returns, okay, he, he's going to put this place in subjection and and, uh, and set up his men, women, and children. All right, and that's absolutely beautiful. And then the two-thirds are going to come through the loins of the elect. <clears throat> and we wait for that day patiently, you know. And that, that day is coming. We can feel it. We just have to continue to hold on. Right, continue to build up this uh, body, and that's something that the elders continue to uh, to push. That that they've been really pushing that spirit. Okay, not to get you know we shouldn't be uh, tearing each other apart. You know, it's it's for us to be built up. We're being built up through the spirit. You know, we're tearing down Esau, Edom, and these in these heathen nations through the spirit, and we're being built up. That temple that David prophesied about. You know, and uh, in and I heard a, a, a video and a lesson from a brother, uh, and he spoke on uh, the the Hebrew word for great millstone. And I couldn't, uh, I can't remember it, but uh, when I heard it, it just it struck something in me. Like, yeah, this this they were saying that, you know, thousands of years ago, right? Speaking about these these lively stones, these these uh, men that made up the church, and that. You know, we're not an actual physical building. And that's beautiful to understand that. And the cornerstone, the, the top stone, the foundation, that rock, is Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, who's setting all these prophecies in, 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 into play. Okay? And chiefly Yahweh, you know, who, who has uh, given Yahweh Shai the, the spirit of prophecy to, to trickle down to us. Because Yahweh Shai is the word. Okay? Now, he was a physical man that lived. Right, but he he's he's this word also. You know, that's why he said to eat of his uh flesh and drink of his blood, man. We're supposed to constantly, you know, be be putting our mind into this word. And as these prophecies increase, we're increasing in prophecy. All right, Shalom.